Dinosaur Simulator has just gotten the biggest update of its entire 9 year history on Roblox. Yep, that's right, the recode is finally here and they made some major changes that haven't been touched since day one. First, let's take a look at the outside stuff, the user interface. The UI has been completely recoded, although some of it is actually from an older version. But it's much faster and smoother, and you no longer have to wait a million years when trying to menu. Now, let's take a look at the dinosaur selection menu. First, the icons have been updated, for the most part. Many skins that were previously just blank icons now have pictures. That's great. And there's a favoriting system. Your favorite dinos will appear at the top, so you no longer have to scroll through the entire list to search for them. And you can basically see all the stats for your dinos now, including its diet, attack rate, bleed, and all that good stuff. There's also a list layout option, which I find to be extremely useful. Here, you can see each dino's full stats, and your progression with them, so you know which dinos you've got elder, and which you don't. Skins are also better organized now. For each dino, there are three skin sections, section A, B, and C. A are the primary skins. These are the skins that actually look good, and the ones with different models. B are the classics. These are the older versions of the base dino, and you can get them either from trading or from game passes. Bruh. And C are recolors. These include the glass skins, rainbows, inverteds, diamonds, golds, and all of those. Although for some reason the pitch wraith isn't considered a recolor, but the gold wraith is. Next, you'll notice there are some more tabs down here. The one we're on is the Dinosaurs tab, which lets you pick out dinos. This is the Inventory tab. You can look at your entire inventory here without ever going to the trade map. Here, you can not only see the dinos you own, but how many of them you own. You can also see your token inventory, which are the skins you've converted on the trade map. Much more convenient. Finally, here's the big one, a conversion system with a new currency. I can't believe it took Dinosaur Simulator 9 whole years to introduce a new currency. Anyway, the new currency is called SDNA, or short for Super DNA. This stuff is a lot more valuable than normal DNA, as you can tell here since Apex Hothead only costs 500 SDNA. You can get SDNA by converting skins. Each type of skin will be worth a certain amount of SDNA. For example, you can tell my glass skins here are worth about 20 SDNA. There is some variation in value though, like some of my gold skins here are worth 5, while others are worth 10 or even 15. This depends on how valuable skins are deemed by the devs. Note that this isn't finished yet, since Galactic Barrow here is only worth 1 SDNA right now. Oh, no, no, no. Now that we're on the topic of DNA, let's go in depth about how normal DNA has changed too. The entire DNA system has been revamped, which is crazy since Dinosaur Simulator has always stuck with the same old boring system for grinding DNA, which was basically the growth rate multiplier times 25. So a dino like Argentinosaurus with a growth rate multiplier of 4 will get about 100 DNA per dino sim day, which is about 3.5 minutes. Although this method still works in VIP servers, it's no longer optimal and AFK farming is now obsolete. There are four main factors in the new DNA system that contributes to how much you earn. These are days, server size, original bonus, and playable bonus. Let's start with days. The old cap to DNA earning was 25 days. Now it's been raised to 100 days, but only on public servers. This means you will continue to exponentially earn more DNA per dino sim day until day 100. This is the formula for it. So a 100 day dino will earn the max DNA per day. Then there's the server size. It's pretty simple. The more people in your public server, the more DNA you'll earn, seen in this equation here. This does not apply to VIP servers. Next, there's region boosts, which is also fairly simple. For example, if I'm in the inlet region, which is boosted, it will double my DNA earning and my growth speed. Keep in mind that the boosted region switches every 15 minutes. And finally, arguably the most important factor is the playables boost. Every two hours, three random creatures will be picked as boost playables. And if you're playing as them during this time, your growth rate multiplier will be set to 5, and it doubles your growth speed. That's right, you'll earn more than Argentinosaurus as long as the dino you're playing as is boosted. So here, if I'm playing as either Cosmoceratops, Soranops, or Squalicorix here, I'll be earning the most DNA. 
And if you optimally combine all of these factors, so a 100 day old boosted dino in a boosted region and a server full of people, you'll be able to earn up to 1025 DNA per dino sim day. So in other words, every dino in the game can now potentially earn up to 1025 DNA if they are on the playables boost, which not only increases growth speed, but also the growth rate multiplier. Yeah, I know it's a little confusing, so if you got any questions, just ask me down in the comments below. I think the new DNA system is pretty nice, since it encourages players to play on public servers and to switch dinos, which in turn earns them more DNA. Oh yeah, also, daily DNA increases exponentially too. On your 30th login streak, you can get up to 10,000 DNA. The packing system also got a new update as well. There's now this new UI that lets you accept invitations and create packs. Packs also now show up on the leaderboard here, unless you set it to private. We also have actual settings now that lets you change the sounds, the graphics, and apparently you can even pick your own combat music. There's also a small update on the gacha aspect of the game. You can now bulk buy eggs and get a discount, apart yeah. from the inverteds. Now, let's take a look at some of the actual in-game mechanics. First, we got climbing, which is actually very convenient. Dinosaur Simulator has had some level of climbing before, but the new climbing mechanic is amazing. Have difficulty trying to get up the edge of a steep cliff? Worry no more with this new climbing mechanic. Simply hover your mouse over the steep edge and click space, and bam, your dinosaur is now climbing. This mechanic, many non-flyers can reach areas they could not before without the help of sky nesting. Climbing not only works on terrain, but also on trees. You can walk along the trunk of a tree all the way to the top, making excellent ambush positions for Avonicus. You can even directly take off from a tree by pressing space again, which leads to this cutscene that sends your dino gliding away. The only downside is that only a select few dinos have this epic capability, including some weird ones like the Bakimasaurus, Megalania, Mayhem Excavator, and somehow even the Caveman. The other new mechanic is fishing, which is available to use for any semi-aquatic creature in the game. All you have to do is go up to a fishing spot, which looks something like this, and hold F to fish. In the minigame, you'll just have to snap up the passing fish, which can come in many different sizes, each rewarding you with hunger points. Pretty nifty minigame that could really come in handy if you're starving. Alright, now let's check out VIP servers. VIP servers have always been a thing in Dinosaur Simulator, and they were pretty much just, well, VIP servers. The only added benefit of owning a VIP server was the ability to teleport and kick or ban players from your server. And you could also grow your dinos in peace. But everything has changed with the recode update. Let's take a look at the new additions. First, let's start small. In VIP servers, you will now have access to the admin panel, which has gone from looking like this to this. You can now check people's account ages, ban them even if they're not in the server, and you can somehow even check trading? Now there's the additional settings. In VIP servers, you can turn on hitboxes, which makes PvP testing much easier, and you can turn on tree swinging, so long necked sauropods can fling themselves about. You can even change the amount of NPC dinos that spawn in your server. And best of all, you can turn off seasons, so you don't have to worry about your trees turning inedible. Now let's take a look at the fun stuff. You can now customize the stats of each and every dino, and all of their skins. Want a speeding Barasaurus? A T-Rex that does 900 damage per bite? An Ankylosaurus that takes no damage from hits? Well now you can in VIPs! This introduces the game to a sort of sandbox mode where players can just mess around and have fun. Now you don't have to go like, hmm, what if this dino had these stats? You can straight up just change them for yourselves, and best of all, VIP servers are free. The recode update in Dinosaur Simulator has added many incredible things that make the gameplay experience better. Some people may prefer a bunch of new skins or remodels being added and would consider that a better update, but I think these quality of life changes in Dinosim has brought the game to whole new levels. New features make playing the game itself more enjoyable. Although the recode isn't fully finished yet since trading is currently shut down, but from what I've seen so far, Dinosim is headed towards a great place. What do you think about the recode update? Are there any features you wish they added? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.